Katie Collins is a water resources agent with Clemson Extension based in Sumter. We used to be in the same office and I miss seeing you. Um, I'm Me so glad too. you come over to help us. And um, your arrangement is one where your education is a large part of this and litter reduction is a large part, I believe, too, of yeah. your responsibilities. Yeah, I work with the stormwater departments with the city and the county. And every few years we put together a plan and we talk about what our main pollutants of concern are in the county. And litter is one of those top oh, three gosh. pollutants that we're worried about here. Yeah. So um, educating folks about litter and kind of trying to get that cleaned up is a big priority. And there's a, a large um, kit called an Enviroscope. A Viroscape, yeah. Enviroscape. Um, that can be used um, with groups, um, but you thought that perhaps it would be easier for teachers to have something that the students could be more intimately involved with yeah. themselves. And I believe Palmetto Pride, which is our state anti-litter um, association, um, gave you a grant to put this together. Yeah, yeah, the grant with Palmetto Pride paid for all of this, and we have 30 kits going out to public and private schools all over the county, and we even have some that can be lended to um, homeschool groups How as well. How wonderful, yeah. that's great. And I think what's fun is there's gonna be a lot of hands-on for the kids in this, but let's start with what you begin with, which is, I guess you want them to know what litter is, talk about what litter is and where it ends up and where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. One of the big things we want them to understand is that, you know, if you throw a piece of litter on the ground, even if it's like a parking lot or somewhere you might not think of as a high value outdoor space, um, it doesn't necessarily stay put in that place. So uh, we talk about a watershed is an area of land where all the rainwater travels to one kind of water body and along the way it picks up pollution yes. like litter and it carries it to our waterways which of course we need for fishing and swimming and recreation and drinking water. And we, we want that water to be clean. Um, so this is really a way for the kids to kind of get hands on and hopefully understand that, you know, litter travels throughout that watershed and why it's so important for us to, to kind of keep the ground and the waterways clean. And to personalize it, you've come up with the, within the kit, which I think you've done a marvelous job. Everything's available for the teacher. She doesn't have to come up with it herself yeah. or himself. Um, a way for them to target and figure out which watershed they're in and even pinpoint where their school is within that so that they can say, gosh, this is where we are. Yeah. And instead of just being an abstract idea. Yeah, so there's four main water bodies that um, areas of land might drain to in Sumter County, the biggest one being the Black River watershed area. So they can kind of look at where their school is and they'll know which river or lake their, their stormwater will drain to. And what do they think are the main sources of litter and where do they think it comes from? What kind of answers do you get? Oh, from the kids? Uh -huh. um, you know, they always want to point the finger at somebody else. And I'm like, I try to bring up too, sometimes, you know, there's accidental litter. Yes. So maybe something falls out of our pocket or we drop something by accident. A big source of litter too is not tarping your load. So yes. people taking trash off and they're not securing that load and things just blow out the back of the truck. So there are certainly people out there throwing litter on the ground intentionally, but some of it is also accidental and there are things we can all do to, to reduce it. And another part of this lesson towards the end is we talk to the kids about how they can reduce, reuse, and recycle items to produce less trash in general, which uh, hopefully eventually would lead to less litter. Then, so I must say, um, this is just such a cool thing that you put together. <laughs> and usually you, you use a different, this is what the children are given. Yeah. And you you say it's aimed for like five or six kids to do together. The teacher yeah. can pass everything We out. set it up so there's six watershed kits per you know, kit that's going mm -hmm. to the school. Yeah. So each class can break the, if there's like 30 kids, they can break those up into six groups. And then you've just got five kids playing with this so they can all kind of get their hands uh -huh. on and get involved. And um, we put it on this just so people can see more easily. And so all these are removable and come in the kit. Yeah, they come, it's just they come loose and then the kids can kind of build their own watershed to, to connect them to it. And they'll name the rivers and they'll name oh, their lake they? and decide where they want their dog to be. So hopefully it kind of connects them. Do they have fun coming up with the names? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, they I love it. They wanna, I had to actually look high and low for these cars that aren't the kind that you pull back and they zoom because oh. I know <laughs> that would just be chaos in the classroom. So I went old school. They don't they don't zoom anywhere on their own. <laughs> and um, so they start off learning about litter and watersheds and that 
you know, every, everything ends up downstream. Yeah. And then, then this is really for them to get an idea of, of not abstractly, but physically seeing litter and where it goes. Yeah. And so you have some pretend litter that's yes. safe to give kids to use. <laughs> yes. So let's, let's, let's see how that would work. Sure, so the kids come up with possible sources of litter. Um, so they might say, well, we'll throw an apple core or some kind of food scraps out the car window. So then we have some oats from oatmeal that the teacher can come around and help them put some fake food scraps uh -huh. on their litter. Or they might say, you know, people would throw plastic or paper litter out of the car window so we would throw some paper scraps on there or maybe mm -hmm. outside of these houses. Um, another type of litter that they Since talk about. There is a puppy and I always say, what kind of litter might come from a dog? And they either, there's a bold one that says poop <laughs> or there's one that wants to whisper it to me like yeah. they poop. Yeah. Um, so we talk about how dog poop adds bacteria to waterways. This is just cocoa, cocoa. powder. It's yeah. not, it's for promise, it's not dog poop. Yeah, it smelled good when you opened it up. <laughs> Completely it differently. Does. It yeah. definitely yeah. smells good, a little deceptive there. Um, and then another Another thing we like to talk about is oil that can be a big pollutant oh, of concern. Yes. So uh -huh. maybe oil leaking from uh, your car or it could be cooking oil that people are putting outside or putting down their, you know, their sinks. And, mm -hmm. and what you should do with that is bottle it up and throw it away in the trash or recycle it. So, um, so we've got some kind of a messy looking yard yeah. here. So yeah. now, you know, the teacher would kind of guide them through a discussion about does our watershed look nice? Would we want our actual neighborhood to kind of look like this? And uh, what do you think is going to happen to this litter when it rains? Do you think it'll stay put? Hmm. What do you think will happen? And so most of this is real hands-on for the kids, but at some point, um, I don't think that, that we're going to let them control <laughs> no. the rainfall. Is no. that correct? <laughs> no. We, uh, the teacher stays in command of the big rain cloud here because I think it would be a mess <laughs> otherwise. Um, so the teacher comes along, um, and they're the storm, and they pour a little bit of water on the oh. watershed. Mm. And sometimes, if you want to get the kids real involved here, and if you don't mind the noise, I have them imitate thunder by banging on the table or, you know, lightning strikes, yeah, depending yeah. on how, how much energy you want to release that day. <laughs> um, and then they can see down at the bottom all the litter has collected in our, our lake mm -hmm. down at the bottom. And we talk about, you know, do, would you want to swim in that lake? Would yeah. you want to go fishing in there? Do you want your drinking water? to come from there, and usually there's a very resounding no, definitely yes, not. I guess so. And we have an additional activity where they can try to clean up the litter once it's in the water, mm. which is hard, so yeah. we talk about it's easier to prevent than to uh -huh. clean up, and then that leads into that reduce, reuse, recycle conversation. Wow. Um, and so you think they actually think about it, I mean, when they see this and think maybe they, some of them may have boats and canoe or kayak with the parents and things, and all of a sudden, it's like, all oh, this is in the water yeah. that I enjoy being in, and that my dog sometimes likes to go swimming in, or that they may be swimmers in lakes and ponds as well. Yeah, exactly. When mm. I do this um, in classrooms, usually before we start anything, we talk about, well, what do you use water for? And most of them have been fishing at the very at least, least yeah. or have been in a boat, or at least like to go walk by, you know, the lake or sure. the river. So mm -hmm. there's some connection. If nothing else, they at least have to drink water every day. So we all have some connection to the uh, water. Of course. And then, um, clean up within the, we don't want to have any litter in the classroom. <laughs> um, and we are trying, you've made it very easy for the teachers. I mean, you even give them a building block to put under here yeah. so that they have a natural way to it's raise this up and elevate it. Um, so how hard is it for the teacher to clean this up? Have you been thought about that? Yeah, it's really well? simple. In each kit, um, I've included like a colander. Oh. So when they go to clean it up, they can just take it over to the sink, run some water and dump it into the colander so that these little pieces don't clog up their sink drain. Um, and then th in the instructions, it says, you know, just leave it out to dry for a few hours before you pack it away. And then these are stuck down with some kind of um, little yeah. funky, <laughs> sticky stuff. And so you just Take that, that off, off, and then these all just go back in their own box so that everything yep. is very compact and easy to use. So they yep. just sit out around and dry, and then the kids, I think this is a good activity. I think yeah. it would give them, a, and um, it's funny, um, I've heard from people saying that their kids have sometimes helped them break a litter habit that they yeah. may have had. Yeah, yeah, and that's part of the hope is that, you know, we're training a new generation so that when they're older, they have these lessons, but also hopefully they go home and if a parent throws a cigarette butt out the window, they'll tell them, you know, that's not good. Mm -hmm.
I'm glad you have a great association with your Sumter, with Sumter County and the city of Sumter and yeah. our schools. Yeah, the city of Sumter has partnered on this whole program. Um, they have a litter officer that's been around for a few years now, so he's helping me deliver all the kits and reach out to schools, and that's been a really nice partnership. And um, if the t if, and then if the teacher wants you to come in, I guess sometimes you can even make visits to school and talk to older groups if necessary. Absolutely, um, and my contact info is on here, so if they run low on supplies, I can resupply that, and if they need, you know, a follow-up lesson or more information, I'm happy to visit. And I, why don't I take this opportunity to let you brag about some of the kids at Sumter High that you work with and what y'all did recently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, several of the clubs at Sumter High, um, they go out and pick up litter really often. Um, there's a teacher there, Kyle Austin, that I um, kind of help coordinate some of those things with. And this past Saturday, we went out, picked up over 850 pounds of litter. Wow. It was a huge amount. What a great group of kids. Yeah, they yeah. were working hard. They did great. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next generation might turn out to just surprise us wonderfully. Won't it I be think great? So. Yeah. I think so. Well, um, you've surprised, you don't surprise me, but um, <laughs> you've always pleased me and um, make me happy when I see how resourceful you are and thank what you. you're doing to um, make it easy for people to try to pass on these good ideas. Thank you so much, Katie Thanks Collins. for having me.